Well, hello, 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 and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy Thurman Simmons, your facilitator for this discussion table today. And you already know, this is where young artists or creators connect to share stories and ideas, inspire others, and hopefully transform the world through real, raw talk, unedited talk, so don't expect perfection here. If you're looking for perfection, turn on, turn on television because, you know, we're just here being who we are. So, but I am so happy today because I see two young men. It's, it's always a pleasure to see two black young men who are doing positive things. And guess what? One of them has on a Morehouse shirt. I wonder why. <laughs> he has on a Morehouse shirt because these are two Morehouse men. They go to HBCU. Can I get a hand clap for the HBCU? Woo <laughs> okay, and one of them uh, is Chris Dumas, which he'll tell you more about who he is in a few moments. And one is, you know, he's dear to me. I just got to you, so don't y'all say anything negative. <laughs> 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 this is Money Murph, a Money Murph. Been knowing him since he was eight. Lord have mercy. Jesus, they grow up so fast. But anyway, guys, can you tell, first of all, since this is for young people and they don't think I'm joking, that I'm, you know, trying to pull young people in, tell the audience what your age is, where you're from, and where you are now. You could, any one of you can start first. Ah, uh, well, I'll go ahead and go. Um, how y'all doing? My name is Amani Murph. I am uh, 19. I am from Atlanta, Georgia, by ways of Austell. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I've, I've, like you said, I've known you my whole life for the most part. And um, really, I'm, I love creating. That's it. That's, that's who I am for the most part. I've been playing music my whole life. Uh, and also business, and getting into business. So that's who I am. Um, well, my name is Chris Dumas. Uh, I'm 18 years old. And I go to Morris College from Atlanta, Georgia, originally, um, around the West End area. And like Amani said, like, I like creating in, in my own type of way, like whether it's like expressing myself, whether it's through poems or just podcasts and certain things like that. Okay. I love it. Now, um, Chris, what high school did you go to? I went to the same. We went to the same high school. Uh, yeah, I went to New Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, my daughter's at New Man. A money helped her get there every day last year. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I was there. Yeah, I, was there. I, I picked him up too. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was with us. <laughs> okay, so New Man is a great school. I'm um, shout out to New Manchester High School, <laughs> the best kept secret in Douglas County. Right. But uh, since you're here as young black men, I want to, you know, go right at it. How do you feel in the society we're living in today? You know, I asked this question. I had um, some 18 year olds on here a few weeks ago and um, I asked them the same question. How do you feel as young black men during all this social unrest civil unrest um i'll definitely say it is hard uh waking up every day seeing something new on the news or on social media it definitely is hard to get through but times are changing slowly but surely it's um it's something we're working towards and i see with our generation we're definitely making a, a big effort to change things whether it's signing petitions going out to rallies or rights both <laughs> but definitely yeah we're making we're making change over time um like Amani said like it's some days where it gets discouraging or some moments I would, I would rather say but for the most part I just feel like this is our time this is the most moment that we've ever had so far and I feel like it's, it's our generation's opportunity and um responsibility to try to make as strong as an impact as we can we know it's not gonna be done overnight, so it's gonna be those days where we feel discouraged. But we have to just keep fighting and keep on trying to express ourselves and, and try to fight for what we know what we know is right. 
And I think for both of us going to uh, HBCUs and stuff, we learn, we learn that like unique how to do it in you in, in, in unique, and I think the right way. So, you know, I won't knock PWIs, but let me tell you something. I went to the great dear old Mars Brown. Around the corner, yes, sir. Corner, and there is nothing like an HBCU education. And when That's I say right. education, I'm not talking about just books. You learn about yeah. life. Mm -hmm. You, you um, form those relationships that last you your entire life. I am still connected to the people that were was in the music program with me, and can call them at any given moment. They're like family. So. There is nothing like it. I'm glad to see that you all are at an HBCU. Right. Now, um, can you also tell me or tell the audience what you do through your creativity? Ah, uh, well, right now, currently, well, I did have a plan, a platform going on before COVID hit, <laughs> uh, but my platform was called Get Out Into the Community. But basically, uh, at Morehouse College, I was running for a position, uh, executive secretary, but I didn't end up, I didn't get it. But I still wanted to push the same platform that I had, which was to go out into Metro Atlanta public schools and just preach academics and tell them what like the importance of college is. So it's just even though I didn't get the position, I still want to make sure I'm able to go to these different schools and speak to kids who didn't have the same opportunities as me. And maybe give them a chance to see what Morehouse College is like or Clark Atlanta or Spelman or Morris Brown, you know? So, hey. <laughs> so just giving a chance, you know? So we'll definitely you know, be working honey, on that next year. You know, um, you just said something that I'm gonna have to share testimony here. You just said, even though I didn't get the position, I still wanted to, you know, continue. Right. I cannot tell you how many positions I have applied for to get out of the classroom right. where I teach and did not get them right and i at first i didn't understand i said now god now i know i'm overqualified to do some of these positions but what it did was it pushed me to do something more innovative that he had given me years before that he's now pushing me into so sometimes a no doesn't mean no like right. it never it means i'm gonna push you to a level that's beyond where you are so i'm glad you're doing that that's needed in our community what right. about you chris um me personally i've always found a love like just since i was a little kid of like sports and like writing and, and just journalism in general so i try to use that as like a like as like a platform where i just turn it into my own thing so i have like podcasts and stuff that i just started um and a number that I, a number of different ones i'm gonna start in this coming year so right now i just have a sports podcast podcast that i just i talk about sports talk about active sports and what's going on in the sports room right now with a couple of friends i just find that's another way for you to express yourself in your own way it's your own platform that you can do anything with so so you know i've heard this from younger children that i teach um what but i want to hear it from you guys what is it that inspires you what inspires me i would have to say it's the people around me like oh. being in a like the small environment of our school like it's not that many students but it's so many ideas bouncing back and forth to each other being in the dorm room being up at three o'clock in the morning just talking having conversations like running ideas past your friends it definitely it i wouldn't no i'll say it makes you more innovative like yes. just having somebody to just just talk to every day or just run your ideas past. Cause some people, they'll hear your ideas, but it's always just like, uh, it's off putting. Like, I, I, how, how would I say it? Like, oh, uh, it, it sounds good, but can you actually accomplish it? But I feel like when I have conversations with my brothers, they actually believe in me. So that's definitely like what inspires me. Money, you must be all in my head. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I and this um, started this platform, a discussion group um, on social media, and it's like pulling teeth to 
to give them to even share ideas. And I'm saying, listen, this is a platform for creators. You need to connect with like-minded people. Right. But I guess um, some people don't feel like their area, what they do is good enough to present. But if you're with other creators who are thinking like you, right. they know just what to say to you. They know to say, listen, you, you might need to try something else. Right. <laughs> but it's important that we can have those connections, um, positive connections, because there are some that are not, we don't need right. to connect with, mm -hmm. but having those positive connections to push us forward. What are, you, what are your thoughts, Chris? Um, well, like you said, like going to college, um, you, you're open up to a wide variety of ideas and new people with new ideas. So when you're in these areas and where, where, where being able to share is acceptable, like you, you begin to like bounce ideas off each other and like think of like, or even when people start to actually act out their ideas or like we have, we have friends that want, wanted to do something in the beginning of the year and did it. So it just, it, it gives you motivation to say, wow, maybe I can do it too. Maybe I can. Instead right. of these, instead of speaking these in, like ideas, just speak them into existence and like actually follow through with them. So I think that we just have a whole bunch of more than ideas, but motivation around us right. to just succeed. So how important is it to have the right connections? Cause you know, like I just said, you might end up with the connection that need to be a disconnect. <laughs> yeah. So it's very, it's very important. I, I'll say it's very important to have that circle to just be able to speak to people who are, who have your best interests, really, mm -hmm. just because you know you can run an idea past them, and your idea won't end up somewhere else yeah. with somebody else. So, it's just important to have that that tight knit friend friend group. So, and like more importantly, like to have to have that tight knit friend group, but also have people that can help you with your idea. So, like if I right. come to, if I come to people in my friend group and saying I have this idea, oh really? I know somebody that like I might be able to help you with that, or right. I might I might have the same interest, or I might have an interest on a different level, and it's just when you have a close friend group that wants to succeed, it might be in different ways, but success is success in uh, one's eyes. So it's just when you have these ideas and everybody believes in you and wants to help you, it just makes the process so much easier. Like because you you just constantly stay motivated, you constantly have help from your peers. Okay. Um. Next question. What, how do you know when the idea that you've received in your, your mind, your imagination, the idea that you've received is something that you should act upon? Um, that's a good question, but honestly, I feel like you, you never know. You mm -hmm. really never know. It's always a jump that you have to take. Like when it comes to creativity, it's always a risk that you have to take. You have to be able to jump off that cliff and, whether you know or not, you got to have faith in your idea and what you created. So it's, it's if you know your content is good, take that jump, take yeah. that leap. It's, de it's most definitely all about faith. Like really, like, cause I mean, there, there's a lot of times where you might have this idea, you don't know if it's going to work. So you don't want to try it because you're, you're afraid of failure. Right. But like, how I, I always like think about it is like, really, there's no such thing because it's e even through failure, you learn a lesson. So because this my idea might have failed, that does not discourage you to make like to create other ideas and turn them into fruition also. So it's just like you have you can't be afraid to try new things. You right. really can't. Because life is just risk. You can't if you if you if you go through life and you're sitting here stagnant and not wanting to try new things, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get anywhere. Right. But you have to be able to and, and be willing to try new things. Now, both of you, I do know this, you come from very supportive families. Right. And so you've had that all of your life. What impact can you say that support had on some of the decisions that you made, you know, as young people and now into young adult? Uh, you go yeah, I was going to say, well, me personally, like, I've grown up in a household where my mom has always taught me that you live in a world where they try to suppress your creativity, try to, they try to suppress your voice. Mm -hmm. So be sure to magnify it. Do, do what you can, do what you can to spread your word regardless because they, they don't want you to do that. And it's for a reason because they understand that it's power. Yeah. So it's like, 
going in, going to, growing up in a household, my father, he he went to HBCU and worked at HBCU, which is at Morehouse. So they've always taught me like the struggles that they've gone through being black and the struggles that I could have potentially go through. And the last thing they would always tell me not to do was stay suppressed in my thought. Ooh. So that's always that's always motivated me to just express myself even more. Um, I definitely say with my mother and father, they have been with me the whole way, mm-hmm. ever since I was a kid. So even when I had ideas of just just doing music or quitting sports, they were with me. So yeah. And then junior year, I'm pretty sure that was the year I quit football. But and I told my mom she ex- like I t- explained to her why I didn't want to play anymore. And I said, I want to stick to just wrestling. And she was supportive. So it's like anything I do, I know they're behind me 100%. And even before I make that commitment to go to Morehouse College, my mom sat me down because we all know Morehouse isn't really a, it's not cheap. It's not. Right. So my mother and father both sat me down and they, they asked me, was it something I really wanted to do? And I did. I couldn't see myself going to any other college, really. So I, I made that commitment, and they're with me the whole way. So Yeah, the, I think that is that support is major. And you don't have to have it just from your family, your immediate family. It sometimes may come from a mentor that's not in your home, but right. they're following you. They're making sure that you have what you need emotionally and sometimes financially. So the support is a strong factor in a person making it. Right. And that's another reason why this connection platform is so important because it also gives you support from other creators. Right. Now, um, I remember money he started out playing piano. <laughs> True. <laughs> right. Yes. And, but he, I remember when it shifted. And I knew when it shifted. Um, and money, I think, was just going to try to hold on to it. But he really, <laughs> his heart was starting to move somewhere else. And I really wish I had pulled up this video of money. He was speaking for Jesse Jackson. You remember that? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I think I was in seventh grade. <laughs> yeah, I, remember. I still have it. And I remember sitting in the audience watching, and inside I knew um, you were going over into like leadership. I, I knew it. I said, This is going to be this child, get ready to be political. And so I'm just watching how lives unfold. Chris, I know that about money. But what can you tell me that you have seen over the years unfold into where you are now? Like uh, when you was a child, some idea you had that just grew and grew and grew, and now you're here at Morehouse. Um. Well, first off, I like from being a little kid, Morehouse was always in my eyes. That's always where I'll picture myself going. And when it came to my personal, like my personal career like what I want to do in my life um I found that out very like uniquely like I like growing up it was always my mom was like Chris you should be a lawyer you should be a lawyer you should be a lawyer so that's in my head like, I want to be a lawyer I know how to argue like that was just that was just in my head that's why I equated it with uh-huh. so it was like one day I'm, I'm I'm walking to a Hawks game with my dad and he's like Chris you ever thought about being a sports analyst I'm like what's that and he's like people that sit around at a desk on tv and talk about sports all day Mm-hmm. At the time, even now, I've always, always loved sports. Any sport, you know, I know better. Like it's just that's that's how I, that's that's just how that's what I do. Mm-hmm. So when I combined my argumentative nature with my knowledge of sports, it was like oh. this is the perfect pathway. Like it was like this is the perfect pathway that I, I need. I need to do that's what I want to do. So ever since then, I fell in love with it, and even now, I've conformed it to my own way so instead of like me wanting to be on tv i want to i want to i want to be able to go on somewhere like youtube and have my own unique platform instead of instead of conforming to somebody else's uh platform or what they think i should do and that's important too um you might have people doing the same type of thing but no Mm -hmm. one will have what you have to offer to it that's what creativity is all about 
Mm -hmm. right. um, money. Yes. Tell us a little more about this out into the community vision you have and, and what are your aspirations for it? So the first time I had a thought about it, it was really sitting down with a few of my friends from New Manchester, from Douglas County. And um, as you know, I moved from Austell in about uh, seventh grade, I'll say. So, and they were talking and we were realizing the differences between our school and the predominantly white schools in our county. And what we were talking about, like, we never realized it in school, but being at Morehouse showed us that it wasn't fair. The things that we had, it wasn't really, it wasn't equity. It was equality, but it, was not it, equity. it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So over time, I realized, like, also I volunteer at uh, Washington High School for as a wrestling coach. Oh, but, good. So, so, like, over time, being in these schools, I just realized that, like, a lot of these kids don't have somebody to talk to or somebody to mentor them. And I said, I'm not doing anything right now. <laughs> um, so I might as well, I might as well use my voice to speak to people. And actually in the beginning of the year at Morehouse, I'm not, I can't go too much in detail, but <laughs> they, um, we wrote, they asked us who we were mm -hmm. and, I said I was the one who spoke for people who don't have a voice. Mm. So that's been my mission statement. Ever since ever since I wrote that down, that has been what I live by. So with uh, Get Out Into the Community, I just want to go out in Metro Atlanta Public Schools and just tell them about college. But we tell gonna them make, about We're going to help make that happen. Right. <laughs> it's all about the right connections. And, and you know, um, I think it's so important for our young people to see other young people. Right. Yeah, they'll listen to me, but you know, it, it's more meaningful sometimes when someone can relate to um, their world and what they're going through. Right. And so uh, that leads me to the next thing I want to ask. What could you tell that little black boy, that little black girl who cannot even see they they can't even they barely can get something to eat they're living in a home with 10 other people and I, i'm telling you something that i'm not making up it's real 10 other people they barely get meals and they just cannot see themselves going to a college because they're looking at my, my folks don't have any money what can you tell them about using their creativity to get out of that situation? I would just say that's that's actually honestly a tough question. Like I know, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, being that somebody I've never been put in a situation. I I feel like the main advice I can give them is like just stay motivated and use and use 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 your situation as motivation. So basically where you're at right now, envision yourself somewhere else in 10 years, five years, just whatever, whatever, in, in whatever age you want to be. Cause, and just know that the sky's the limit. Do not ever limit yourself in anything you do. Right. Because that's how you stay stagnant. Just be, make sure you know, like within yourself, you believe in yourself enough to understand that you can do anything that you put your mind through. Like, my grandmother tells me all the time, even at this age, when I when I'm going to go run or something, Chris, you can hit this time, or you can you can you're gonna make it back safely, or if you want to do something, you can do it. Like she makes sure to this day to to, to, be, to beat that in my head. So, right. Um, what I'll say is, I've always been, I've always had the mindset that nothing's permanent. Mm. Nothing's permanent. Just whatever you're going through, it is a fight. And you got to get through it. It's trials and tribulations. And I know it is hard. And it's easier said than done. But you have to use that emotion that you're feeling and what you're going through and use it to go towards your creativity. And that's what a lot, that's where the best creations come from. People who have been at the bottom or mm -hmm. people who have seen it all. That's where you get the best creations. All right. Uh, let me think. 
I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there's definitely a lot of people that have been to the bottom and you know, you made it to the top. Yeah, because you've my, seen well, so look, much. Tyler Perry. Look at Tyler Perry. Yeah, my, my dad, my dad tells me all the time, like the main thing that President Obama did was show people that look like him that anything is possible. Anything, anything. He couldn't he couldn't have did nothing else right in office. But what the most important thing that he did was show everybody of his of his color that he can do that they can do whatever they want. And you know, oftentimes <clears throat> I find myself well, I have to encourage myself. You know, because we're all human, we all get tired, we have to pull away sometimes, but you have to encourage yourself sometimes. And if you need someone, have someone that you can connect with. I, I just cannot stress that enough. And, and if we have something that's from God, you're going to need somebody else to do it with you. You, you know, you, it's, it's not in isolation. You're going to need it. Now, gentlemen, have you brought something that you can share? Um, I do this at every platform. Any work of creativity, you want to say something, monologue, anything. Anything you want to share? <sighs> do I have anything? <laughs> <laughs> All I can say for anything to share is you can go to YouTube and look at my podcast. <laughs> That's right. All I can say. Um, but yeah, that's all I can say when it comes to anything to share. Yeah. Currently, um, due to COVID-19, <laughs> <laughs> the plan has been postponed, <laughs> but I say, give me about a year. I will come back <laughs> and then we can have this same conversation. It will definitely be some, uh, but you know what money after you told me about it, it's not postponed. We just got to think about it differently. Right. That's and that's why, you know, that's why connections are important. Again, because sometimes you might be thinking, uh-uh, and then somebody else sees something else. Right. So, come on. We can do it. You can do it. Everybody can do it. Right. Now, before we end this conversation, I want to thank you. I, and I, I will say this. I am most proud of you both. And I hope that you will continue to do what you're doing in the community, letting your light shine, graduating from that marvelous HBCU called Morehouse. Right. I'm going to be expecting to see leadership on high levels from the both of you and whatever field you choose to be in, make sure you're leading and most importantly, giving back. Right. That, you know, giving back to others. And you can't always look for money right but give back to your community and there's some young people out here that need you lord matter of fact there's some old people that need you too <laughs> <laughs> but i want you to share your um social media platform or net or what, what do you call them links or whatever we got you. Page, whatever share with the audience you see i'm old i'm using all those old turns my heart <laughs> My daughter said, Mama, please. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Share how the, how other people right. can contact you. Right. Um, excuse me. Um, I mean you can uh follow me on Instagram at uh Chris.dumas. Um or uh Twitter is it's the same, it's the same way, Chris.dumas. Uh for me, I primarily use Instagram, so you can definitely follow me at Amani J dot a M A N I J dot merch. So okay. and also email me too. If you, if oh, you yeah, email you. at Dumas D O O M E S at three five at gmail dot com. Right. And then uh my email is Amani J Murf at hotmail dot com. Okay, and and listen, these young men, I'm sure they will be happy to speak with you if you need an ear, or you know, if you have something that um, they can do in the community, reach out to them and try to help them stay in their creative areas. And we just help each other do this. And if you feel like you want to be on some platform like this, you want to talk about your story, feel free to reach out to me at integrativeartscreations.com or email me at 
Integrative Arts at att.net. That's I N T E G R A T I V E Arts at att.net. Gentlemen, thank you again for enlightening us and sharing. And we pray that you have a successful school year in this virtual world. <laughs> I'm glad it is virtual because you don't need to be in the classroom right now. <laughs> but um, I pray you much success for you in the coming years. And audience, success for you as well. Thank you, and we will see you again next week. <laughs>